Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Hope you're having a great Tuesday and a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Arnold and Mike. I greatly appreciate your support. Two quick notes from yesterday. One with regard to that supercharger update that I said wasn't really news. Well, turns out that it was. The update was that it's telling you what specific superchargers are not working. So yes, that is indeed actually new. And then two with regard to the users where I said they were being locked out of their vehicles due to the network outage. Well, it wasn't that they were locked out. It was just that they couldn't access certain features via the mobile app. So thank you guys for commenting and keeping me on my toes. And I apologize for the mistakes. So let's kick it off today with Tesla stock. A lot of people are going to say or presume that Elon is selling more shares today. Definitely possible. We'll find out, you know, in the next few days. But the 10 year treasury yield rose to 1.66% from a 1.62 close yesterday. And the 2021 high this year has been 1.75%. Now, generally speaking, yes, higher yields make future profits less valuable in current terms. And so Rob and Alex Potter in their discussion actually touched on this very topic, how when interest rates are rising, people valuing companies, specifically tech companies, will tend to use higher interest rates to discount those future cash flows. So if you're using a larger figure to discount those cash flows, they'll be less valuable in today's terms. And since the 10 year yield began rising from 1.55% on Friday, the NASDAQ is down nearly 3%. So just keep in mind, always macro factors at play. So at the time of recording, Tesla down about six and a half percent. The NASDAQ is down almost one and a half percent which is a big move for the nasdaq and yes this will add to the volatility so far for tesla in november so here we have the works council union talk going around today sawyer says tesla will get a works council in germany the election board is to be elected at the end of november important clarification here a works council is not a union these are elected employees with laws to protect them from retaliation by the employer no union fees to be paid. A works council is supposed to control that regulations like safety standards and wages are as agreed upon. Now, from what I'm reading, works councils are just how business is done in Germany. And yes, they might have some more influence than other European countries. However, employees have a guaranteed right to elect a works council for all establishments with five or more employees. These councils negotiate with management over different questions of company policy with different tiered rights for different issues. The rights of the Works Council differs from those of unions. They do not have the right to strike or to negotiate on wages. Now, just to be clear, there is a ton of debate on the productivity benefits or the drawbacks of Works Councils and unions, and it's gone on for years and years. So I've linked this article with some more information below if you would like to read the argument on both sides. And I wanted to spend a moment here because Electric posted this article really conflating unions and Works Councils. It made it very confusing to understand what's going on. One that doesn't really know would definitely be led to believe that IG Mattal was bringing an actual union to Tesla, which is not the case. IG Mattal basically works with these works councils and it looks like Tesla will have a works council, not an actual union. And last thing here, there's about a 0% chance that Elon didn't know this was going to be the case and part of the requirement for establishing in Berlin. So for now, nothing to be worried about. But Sawyer also shared that Tesla says it will start delivering the Model Y performance cars in China soon. This just after we learned that the Model S Plaid will also be making its way to China. Now the Plaid will be exported from Fremont, but this Model Y performance could be manufactured locally because yes, Tesla does have nickel cobalt manganese or an NCM supplier in Shanghai, and that supplier is LG Chem. And yes, behind the scenes, this document may no longer be accurate as we don't always get every update with what's going on between Tesla and its suppliers. However, with the last available information, the Model Y performance was gonna be supplied by LG Chem 2170s and nickel cobalt manganese. So yes, it's possible the Model Y performance could be imported into Shanghai from Fremont, along with the Model S Plaid. However, I would guess that Tesla would want to produce this domestically if possible. Here we have some news that Tesla has hired David Meisler, a former attorney for the SEC and the Department of Justice as new managing counsel. Now, most of us know that Elon has had his fair share of run-ins with the SEC over the years. So having somebody that used to work there now on Team Tesla is definitely a good thing to keep Elon safe. Meisler commented, today a new journey begins. I start at Tesla as a managing counsel for litigation where I will support our important mission of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. So as Tesla continues to grow and receive more public scrutiny in the spotlight, this is a great move on Tesla. I MO. Green, the only on Twitter, shared this screenshot that shows premium connectivity subscription and the ability to swipe to subscribe for this upgrade in the vehicle. So apparently for some users, 
in-car purchases and upgrades are now actually available. And I would add, it might be nice to have a pin or a password after this swipe to subscribe in the vehicle just to prevent any children or passengers in the car dropping a $10,000 bill unexpectedly on your credit card for an accidental purchase. The supercharger updates guys shares, if it's any sign semi-production is ramping up, I would argue that it's not. The permit for the mega charger at Pepsi's Modesto facility was issued yesterday. Construction can now begin on the site, which has a total valuation of $334,000. Now, to be clear, Tesla is mentioned nowhere in these documents. However, it does say EV charging installation, including associated electrical equipment and a battery storage system at Pepsi. So I would say this is a sign that maybe five to 20 semis are delivered to Pepsi by the end of the year, like we've heard, but I would not take this as full on semi ramp is beginning. Here we have some news that Japan is looking to up its EV subsidies to match places like the United States. They are doubling the purchase of incentives for EVs to $7,000 and they will subsidize charging infrastructure. The program will cover plug-in hybrids and fuel cell vehicles sadly, but they need to do something as electric vehicles made up less than 1% of all new passenger autos sold in Japan last year. Alex on Twitter shared some screenshots of the Tesla anti-handbook handbook for new employees. There is definitely some funny lines in here and it's very different than a traditional employer. So I'll put the screenshots up on the screen. You can pause and read it if you're interested. Here we get an update on Reddit that Sentry Mode Live camera is now available on Android. So to all of you Android users, get an iPhone. Here we have a video from Tesla owners online sharing an update on Tesla waypoints and showing us how it works and adding some requests for a feature update. We now have it. Now, of course, in my car, I get cold weather improvements, tidal, traffic aware cruise control chime, which is a new feature as well. You'll now receive an audio alert when traffic aware cruise control is enabled. So anyways, let's take a look at the navigation. So for example, if I tap in my navigation here and I want to go, let's say to the ice cream store, I can just do that and we'll add it. But here's a neat, neat feature. So now you can press plus up here in the corner and you can type in, say, another address. I don't know, I'll just pick something here. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you'll see that it gets added to the waypoint. You can also conversely do it sort of this ways. So maybe you wanna go here, you can just tap on that. And now there's a button here that says add. You can add that to your route and that gets added to the route. Now, unfortunately, there is no way to reorder these or to eliminate them after the fact. You can't even tap on them. There's no remove button or anything like that. So if you make a mistake, you kind of have to press cancel, start all over again. Hopefully. And on that feature request, here's a good point. For those wanting more waypoint functionality like reordering and removing specific waypoints, let me tell you how agile software development works. You deliver the smallest amount of value as soon as you can and then get feedback to learn from. This is advantageous because it allows you to deliver value to users as quickly as possible and get market validation before building on top of it. There may be technical or user experience issues that you may want to learn from and you may need to make adjustments. After gathering feedback, then iterate by improving existing functionality or adding additional functionality in small frequent releases learning from feedback between each release. If it gets a lot of use and is successful, customers will request more and Tesla will build up the feature set. A quick note here, but Joe Biden has announced that the US and other countries will release strategic crude reserves in an effort to increase supply and force gasoline prices lower. Historically, this only will dampen the prices, if at all, in the short term. The current price per barrel is around $78, which was up between the range of $50 to $65 pre-CV. Here we get some anecdotal evidence from a Tesla sales rep via a text. We're starting to see Model 3s with the USB-Cs. Yours may not need the retrofit. Have a great week and happy holidays. So nice to hear, and hopefully that is the case for all users. Good question here from Viv, but is the world simulator mostly simulating scenarios based on US traffic fleet data, or are you taking other regions into account yet? Elon said it can simulate anywhere, but we need to focus on one region until FSD is out of beta, then expand geographically to have betas in other countries. Canada is not a lot different from the US, but different enough. Speaking of the FSD beta, 10.5 has actually gotten really good reviews in the first few days. Now, yes, experiences will vary greatly depending on where you're at and what your specific driving situation is like, but I would say overall 10.5 is overwhelmingly positive thus far. And in response to a whole Mars video with zero disengagements, Elon said, I was able to do several zero takeover drives around Austin last night using random map pin drops, 
No Tesla has ever done these routes. It looks like Samsung has officially picked a Texas site for their advanced US chip plant. It will be in the city of Taylor, roughly 30 miles, 48 kilometers from its giant manufacturing hub that is already in Austin. The new plant will augment Samsung's already sizable presence in Austin, where it's invested about $17 billion to date on a sprawling complex that houses more than 3,000 employees and fabricates some of the country's most sophisticated chips. Samsung is planning to invest another $17 billion and create around 1,800 jobs over the first 10 years. And this is a really big deal because honestly, this decade, the United States has to get off of relying on Taiwan and Asia for semiconductors. So yes, Tesla is going to be the best insulated from chip shortages this decade because they work so far out ahead and everybody else is left scrambling and Tesla is more flexible. All of that stuff we talk about all the time. However, America as a whole, not just Tesla, but everything that uses a chip really needs to reduce the reliance on this small island of Taiwan. So as mentioned, a big deal here. And if it's any indication, the local Texas government pulled out the stops to snag Samsung, including waiving 90% of property taxes for a decade and 85% for the following 10 years. So remember the other day how I said, this is just how business operates. Companies are given incentives to set up shop in your state. It's not just Tesla receiving handouts. And in case you forgot, Tesla's Cybertruck is supposed to have their new hardware four built by, you got it, Samsung. Where are they gonna hopefully build it? right next to Giga Austin. Tesla has added a few bot job postings that have gone live for California and Texas. Yes, some others have been posted for weeks now, but they have added some new ones. I've included a link below if you're interested. Here we have an interesting note that is only really being reported as far as I can tell from Torque News. So somebody reached out to them and said that the Cybertruck might have over 3 million Cybertruck reservations. The last publicly available information that was kind of crowdsourced, they had the figure at about 1.25 million reservations. So this would basically be a doubling of what we thought the number was just a few weeks ago. Definitely be careful with this one, but I would say the number is between 1.25 million and 3 million reservations for the Cybertruck. And on the high end, if you take that number and multiply by an ASP of we'll say 55,000, that's about $165 billion in revenue over the next few years. It'd probably take them between five and six years to produce that many Cybertrucks, if not longer. It is safe to say that the demand will be there. Now, earlier today, CZ from Binance and Elon Musk kind of got into it on Twitter. Elon basically asked, what's going on with your Doge customers? It sounds shady. And CZ swung back saying, we are pretty certain it's an issue with the latest Doge wallet. We're in communications with the devs. Apologies for any inconvenience that may have caused you. And and then he says what happened here, sharing an article from way back when about the Tesla software glitch that called for a recall of 12,000 vehicles, which was really just an over the air update. Then Elon said, I don't use Binance. I tried at one point, but the signup was too many hoops to jump through. So no inconvenience to me personally, just raising this issue on behalf of other Doge holders. But then CZ kind of calmed down a bit and said, appreciate it. I overreacted a bit due to the word shady. The KYC part is tedious and we can't service United States users. You could try Binance.us, still a tedious signup process, but we do have Doge working with the team to fix the issue ASAP. Here we have CNBC with a positive Tesla tweet. So. Take a look. And it's a great look at how the country's largest auto market is moving in terms of trends, what people are buying, what they're not buying, and the numbers look incredible for Tesla. Now, they've always been strong in California. It's always been their strongest market. But look at the surge in sales this year. Nobody's close to them, up 64%. There you see Porsche, Hyundai, and Kia. The strength of this the Model Y. Now, the Model 3 has always done well there, but the Model Y, it is the fifth best-selling model in California. Let me stress this again. Not the fifth best electric vehicle, the fifth best-selling vehicle, period. It is also the number one luxury compact SUV in California. Here we have an update for Q3 from Xpeng. They delivered 25.6 thousand cars over the three months ending in October, a 200% increase from the same period last year. Tesla, by comparison, sold 133.2 thousand China-made cars over the same period. Xpeng posted a loss of 27 cents per U.S. listed share on a non-GAAP basis and said deliveries over the fourth quarter should range between 34.5 and 36.5 thousand vehicles. Porsche is starting to talk about a flagship model that might look something like the Macan, but they are saying it should arrive sometime in the second half of this decade, so not worth speculating or getting excited about just yet. And last thing for today, this 
in my opinion, is going to be the vehicle to watch for GM. All of the talk about GM, well, what are they actually doing? They might be releasing the Chevy Silverado EV in January 2022 at CES. So definitely need to keep an eye out for that. Everything right now is speculation, but hopefully we get more clarity at that event. And I personally think this vehicle right here is crucial to the success or failure of GM in this EV movement. But that is all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.